Jenny and AJ would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land across the countries now known as Australia and the United States of America. These lands that were never ceded but violently stolen from the oldest living cultures and civilization on this planet. We would also like to pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging for they hold the memories, traditions, culture and hopes of a brighter future for us all. It's also important that we acknowledge the Gumaroi, Barkindji, Lachi Lachi, Birigaba and Waka Waka ancestors and elders of our bloodlines whose shoulders we stand on. Without them, we do not exist. It's through them that we carry our pride, strength and resiliency. We must always remember that under this concrete and asphalt, these countries were and always will be on traditional Aboriginal Australian and Native American land. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Unapologetically Black for our episode number six. As usual, we are so excited to bring you our content. Uh, We work so hard at generating um, produce and products that we are so proud of and that align, you know, with our understandings of our identity, our lived experience, and most importantly, impact. Um, This topic is one that has been thought out. This topic is one that we have really strategized, and that is discussing social media or online platforms Mm. now like i've said we're really taking a multi uh disciplinary approach so we're going to look at social media from a very distinct and unique perspective we're going to provide our lived experience guys but we're also going to reflect on our experiences navigating australia as indigenous women now this is really influential guys because for indigenous people um, that live within indigenous australia or create content around this um aspect of their identities all their beings this is something that is consistently attacked degraded and exploited Mm. so jenny let's kick it off let's take it back to our humble beginnings and our influences and our relationships with social media or online presence so can you tell us all a little bit about your early online days or interactions with the internet yeah, so my first interaction with the internet will, will, I mean, we're going back to probably 2000 and when did I graduate? <laughs> Late 90s, I want to say. Um, we had Yahoo chat. We had one computer in the house. It was dial-up internet, horrible situation. Uh, if you've <laughs> lived through that, then you know what I'm talking about. You know how it feels. <laughs> The, yeah, <laughs> that noise oh my god that should be being You'll never forget tone. literally just to remind me how good we have it now you <laughs> love if you feel like your internet's too slow download the ringtone dialer internet You're and so it just reminds you literally. Um, and no one judge me for my interpretive analysis of that noise <laughs> yeah i was like Came kind out of kind of not no, she's a bit off the octaves <laughs> <laughs> but we, we know we know what she's talking about dial up internet was horrible at the time um my dad was quite you know interest was always interested in technology so we did have a computer long before mm. my friends at school and stuff and so I remember one weekend we had some older girls over and they were um asking if they could use the internet to go so on Yahoo cute. chat and my dad had no idea what yahoo chat was so of oh course that was okay obviously can be very dangerous for a lot of young people and <laughs> i was probably like 12 oh my gosh on yahoo chat um and we, if we think about that now if i had a daughter who was 12 there's no way in hell that she would be on yahoo chat Living but her I life guess, exactly in a lot of ways it, it has prepared me for what has now become the internet um i thought it was interesting as well like back in the day when when i first started getting online there wasn't any representation of black people mm. i don't remember really that 
strong presence of black people. Now mm. we have people who are black and influencers and, yeah. you know, all have, of the above. Yeah, have huge following. So back mm. then uh, it was kind of, kind of dangerous, I guess, in a lot of ways as well, because I wasn't seeing myself represented. I, it mm. then started this whole identity dysmorphia of what yeah. I should look like, what I should sound like, what I should wear. So blah, true. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, it's not just uh, black representation, but, you know, we talked about body positivity last week as well. We didn't see mm. bodies that look, look different. So, um, so in, a true. Lot of, in a lot of ways, it has advanced for the greater good. But mm. I think um, today I, I do have a, a platform on social media through my business. Um, and even now you and I, AJ collective Yay. unapologetically black we have a platform it's still growing but nevertheless being black and mm. is, it doesn't matter how big your following is you have so a true in our community so um now I find it a lot diff- more difficult to navigate the internet I found it really hard as an older person um trying to create boundaries especially yeah the political climate and the things that have happened to say in the last two three years has yep. on some crazy dist- like symptoms of the internet for me that I've noticed in myself like you know I can really get into a slump reading comments mm. um, I try to avoid a lot of different apps on my phone or yeah. social media platforms I, I don't mess with t- TikTok I don't really mess with Twitter me either um, yeah I, I try and stick Twitter. I try and just stick to mm. Instagram and then Facebook. And do you obviously. think that's been a strategy? Like, do you think minimizing where your presence is or where you're accessible at, do Absolutely. you think that's been a strategy to keep yourself safe? Yeah, I don't think I had thought of it. I don't think it was strategic, mm. um, but I have noticed for me, it's hard enough to have a presence or a platform on Instagram and manage that. It's so true. Yeah. Then having a bunch, you know, I couldn't imagine. It's, no. it's already really, really difficult for me as an mm. Indigenous Black woman who owns a business, who's proud of who yeah. she is, who is not shying away from that. That is my brand and who I am so mm. intertwined. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. So um, it's hard. And I know yep. for you, it's probably been really difficult. How is your upbringing mm. in terms of social media? How did, where did it start for you? Yeah, so it was quite similar to you. Like, I was similar, we're just a few years apart. So it's pretty much the same with the whole um, dial up internet. But for me, I was like my parents, and I would love to get more into this in other episodes, but looking at the role of my parents in just regulating this new space. So I think my parents understood that the internet was something that they didn't know. And my parents have been always very protective over me, my sister. Um, You know, they moved us half across the state, you know, to Mm. left our traditional land to keep us safe in Sydney. So I feel like they knew very early on that this internet was just something that they didn't know about. They were very cautious. But in saying that, we we're always very busy. And that's a tactic I think a lot of Black parents do with their kids to keep them off the streets, away from trouble or away from right trouble, you know, mm. is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I had basketball, I had homework, I had homework club or tutoring, whatever it was, um, family time, a chore time, I had all of my day was just scheduled out. <laughs> planned out. And yeah. um, literally, <laughs> and literally planned out. And um so I was very limited, but then when I went on to college, so I went on to live on university campus and we had unlimited internet, Wi-Fi, just up the hoo-ha, mm. your girl fell into YouTube. You know, I fell into it. If it was a uh, home tours, if it was, uh, we were talking earlier about exploring abandoned mansions or yeah. haunted houses, like changed my life. And mm. Jenny herself, you watch those too, right? I love so- them. I love them. And even now when I'm painting for work, <laughs> I have YouTube on in the background. It's like white noise for me. You mom. Okay. And when I go to bed, I turn YouTube on. I don't do at night but I definitely do just doing the dishes I'm not on that level yet girl I love the Um, serial killer interviews too I just run those I love cold cases see me and you are just connected 
Um, but yeah, I found the niche of bloody um, watching abandoned houses and just watching them all night, watching them all day. And then obviously my mind would like be like having weird, crazy nightmares about being in Louisiana, <laughs> walking around an abandoned building. So I just knew then that I'd have to develop a healthy relationship with the internet. And I'm not going to lie, like I've spent a lot of late nights, but my internet and my student life just compacted. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like, you need to get this degree. You're here for a purpose. Um, this tool of the internet was a tool because I was very poor growing up. We did not have the internet. Um, we didn't have much. And um, that made me realize that the internet is always a privilege. And even in my community at the time where my family was, they were way back. Like they had specific companies that could have uh internet coverage not everybody had it in their home certain streets couldn't even get the internet where I'm from um, in the country so it's just interesting the tower actual lines to get it running service was not established yet right so um that happened but even in saying that guys um it also made me understand uh like you were saying sis how alienated we were because I did not see poor people on the internet I did not see content creators that look like me I did not see those homes that look like me um it was very Americanized and at that time I was greatly influenced by America and even England um and being a student as well at the time mm-hmm. but yeah just learning to always know that it's a privilege because when I went home we went I went straight back to that goddamn dial-up honey mm-hmm. on the weekends I know what it was <laughs> and your mum might be thinking like okay Jenny and AJ and their little podcast why are they talking about social media? Mm. Here's the thing. It's really important for us all to recognize. Mm. We, there are not a lot of black people talking about boundaries on social media. There's mm. not a lot of black people who talk about um, how the so- how social media is affecting us as a race of people 100%. and how it affects our culture, um, mm. whether that's good, bad or indifferent. What, there's no one really talking about it. As, a, as two Indigenous women who are on social media, we thought this might be a really deadly mm. yarn to have. If you feel like how we might be feeling, specifically how, how things have played out in the last few years, um, well, it, it's not all bad either. That's I think so it's true. important we talk about some of the good stuff that happens on social media. So have you noticed that anything that you, like for me, obviously social media is yeah. a part of my everyday life now. Um, it's how I run a business it's how Mm. I get my point across and all how I stay in contact with my family I live overseas this is how we're running our podcast Mm. right now this is how we share our information and our lived experience with you mob Um, but AJ what do you think you know is more positive sides of social media that you have seen or how has it influenced who you are today maybe so this is such an amazing question and I think it would be great for me to yarn like the personal and then I'd love to hear about you sis how you've utilized it as a business because right. I feel like we need to hear that and I guess that's what kind of what I'm embarking on now with my workshops and things of that nature mm. but for me I stayed away from social media like I really understood um, very early on the racism. So like, as you know, Facebook, um, I'm, I was literally the audience my whole life until now. So I would follow Aboriginal uh, Facebook groups and Aboriginal posts and information and most mainly on these profiles, guys. So it may be like Aboriginal um, Aboriginal memes, for example, like funny memes or maybe oh, yeah. Aboriginal news, you know, whatever it was, right? Even NITV, for example, on Facebook are constantly trolled by ra- uh, racist uh, people in this country so mm. I would always see this being attacked or being attacked other artists so I'd follow artists on Facebook that was like my favorite thing mm. um having their art fill my timeline abused abuse mm. abuse abuse celebrities like Aboriginal celebrities like Adam Goods abuse 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 mm. Jessica Malboy abuse 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 mm. um Kristen Anu abuse 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 you name it mm. they're abused mm. online and on Facebook posts about them launching an album whatever it may be anything just a picture anything literally anything random and other politicians or people speaking in the public space about Mm. our issues um so that was a thing and I always knew that and I just thought I'm not doing this like I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not doing this um because that's the thing guys when you deal with racial abuse in real life it's re-triggering to go through it so social media you can kind of like just block it just delete it just get away from it right but when you go through racial degradation in real life being racially abused online takes you back 
So mm. I want to be crystal clear because people may be like, oh, you can delete and block now. You can't delete and block that happening to you in real life and you can't block and delete those memories. So I'm going to get really honest when mm. I see comments like that or even online now with my TikTok experience, it takes me back to being a seven-year-old child just being degraded like beyond anything rocks thrown at me and my sister taught being told to go die or whatever the kids were their favorite saying at the time you know you guys are monkeys whatever petrol sniffers whatever the magical mm. thing is and I'm not talking about this to traumatize anyone that is listening to this or hold the concept of trauma porn but I am a strong black woman I do not talk about my trauma because my trauma is personal but in moments like this talking about the abuse we receive online it's so important to connect it back to our lived experience um so in saying that I always stayed off social media I saw my sister over on TikTok how do I delete one pumping this amazing content and just being creative but also being abused online so I would say I want to reply let me reply I've got something funny to say and we'd laugh about it but mm. that was my big push was a I wanted to create but b I wanted to be there for my sister and then my younger sister Michelle Laurie who's on uh, TikTok as well so that kind of pushed me was that collective that family and wanting to connect and stand in solidarity and um, my TikTok blew up it was great it was magical but it also generated that abuse and trauma that I was talking about and I have taken many breaks so I've taken many time off from TikTok months and months and months off months and months on months and months off I'll just come back and leave whenever the hell I feel like it mm. and that guys is innately Indigenous because we know when we need to come and go we know when we need to move we don't follow the mainstream mm. indoctrination around oh you're doing really good you're trending you need to stay no I'm leaving catch us yeah this isn't serving me right now bye bye right. deuces because we can't we deal with it in real life mm. choosing to deal with it on social media is a different kettle of fish I wanted to ask you as well because I have seen that um, you post previously a lot of the comments that you get and so, guys the comments you should see these comments if you're not following AJ unbelievable you, you, you should some of the words the vileness mm -hmm. that it's so unwarranted and uncalled for <laughs> it's, it's, so like, unwarranted. It's, like, it's so it's so like far literally it's just bizarre how these it's people bizarre that's the word come about but I wanted to like is there something that you do when you feel like like how do you one this is a good question I think people want to know mm. how do you feel that social media burnout coming on like what are the signs that you kind of look for or the symptoms of that that sort of happened to you and then what is your process for switching off or remembering it's a yourself? great question Ginny and for me it's that trauma it's a t word so yeah. if I feel like AJ's being dragged back to Broken Hill far western New South Wales where I was abused um, every day of my life, if I feel like I'm going back there and I, these things are like starting to set into my spirit, I'm out. The moment, the moment I get a whiff of it, I'm out of there. But in saying that, guys, um, this is, I'm turning 29 next year. This mm. is not just a gift that I've developed when I've had enough, you know? Um, right. And if you are outspoken about the Indigenous experience or Indigenous space, so I do this in real life, guys. I uh, speak in uh, social groups, uh, within classrooms, within tutorials at university, uh, panels, events, uh, multi-cultural uh, collaborations, if it's societies or cl uh, clubs or collaborations. I... Uh, always speak my truth and if I was in a, a group or a collective and I felt like my voice was not being listened to or I was being uh, racially degraded in any way or minimalized bye Jesus. you know I'm not doing this I'm not participating you're not having access to me I'm out of here I don't give a flying crap um, what accolades or what respect or how hard I've worked to get here the moment that my indigeneity is something that I hold so close to me guys so essential in my identity the moment that starts to happen I'm out of here so guys my biggest bit of advice around knowing when to walk is the moment it starts penetrating your exterior so the moment that it starts seeping in leave mm. and come back I when you're ready come back when you want to come back because that's the other white lie that's what white fellas love to say when you're gone you're gone don't come back I'll come back if I feel like it don't try and tell me <laughs> I'll come back whenever I feel like it what you're gonna do lock me out uh, where's the key at mm -mm. and that's the thing is I think as black followers as well like when we talk about having um even even if you don't 
think you have a platform online mm. if you are a black person and you are online you do have a platform our, our community is so small still um so you know it's, it's nowhere near what what mainstream social media is for white people it, our community is so small so any platform that you are on you do have a platform um and i think so it's true well, is, is the what i was recognizing in what you were saying as well is that culture is not transactional <sighs> I'm here for it. So no amount of money no. should uh, look. We know that this isn't true because there are people no. out here who do this. And that's a whole nother podcast episode coming your way, honey. <laughs> coming when your culture way. becomes transactional, you best believe it's coming. Yes, but you need to understand that um, no amount of money, or no, not even money, no amount of trending social media influencer. Mm your culture is not a transaction so no. you should come and go as you please and all that's of right. the other stuff who cares that's got no. you know as a black baller you don't have to play that game it's a western no. societal game that you do not yeah. want to yeah and the other and this is what ties into that is guys on tiktok you can turn your comments off oh really yep so if you're having a problem right with that, my thing was I like people engaging on my posts, obviously. I want to hear my mob, black fellas and non-Indigenous allies speak on it, hear their right. thoughts and opinions. But if push comes to shove, turn your comments off. Mm. And if you can't walk away, if you still want to participate, turn your comments off. You have to take control. Mm. We have to stop letting these people, uh, racists, rednecks, hillbillies, whatever you want to call them, um, Hicks, we have to stop letting them she take control. <laughs> oh, it first. That's what you mean. Oh. And you know I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. We were talking about. Um, I, I do have a small. I I have a sorry. I keep saying small business. I have a business mm -hmm. online. Um, it's I built it online. I have a platform mm -hmm. online. Um, and I find it really difficult navigating that space so i do if, mm. I, that's what one question that i really wanted to ask you was like what how do you know when it's coming and how do you stop it stop from crawling into a hole forever because i often mm. read comments and it used to be not any of my own comments it used to be um you know reading articles about anyone sam mm. friday jonathan so you would yeah. talk rugby league perfect example yep yeah, just anything in the news when a black yep. person is mentioned, good, bad, Doing or anything. indifferent, you will read the most horrible things about mm. these people or said about these people, I should say. Um, I have... I'm, I have a brand. I'm not shying away from... I, my brand and myself as an individual is so mm. connected without... Yeah me there is no Ginny's girl gang so I don't so exactly ever, I don't ever shy away from mm. things that I'm passionate about or have opinions yep. on so uh for instance Australia and the other thing I want to note guys you're being very humble her work is your art is pro-black the okay. words you use the English language that you utilize is unapologetically black is pro-black and then you combat that with the indigenous design and they're very guys Ginny's work is very traditional but modern so she's using very ancient motifs and very symbolic things for us mm. but they're also aesthetically uh, beautiful but irregardless if you know that they the history of those origins of her designs the spirit speaks for itself you know what I mean and I feel like the negatives recognizes that so clearly people that want to support and stand in solid solidarity with indigenous people see that but they also feel that energy and strength coming from it and that is the thing with white supremacy they want to stamp out our light right it's interesting because I yeah I, I don't ever shy all of all of my work mm. is very pro-black like you said and yeah. it's very statements and every yep. piece has a meaning and a story that yeah. goes along with it and it's not necessarily dream time because I am mm. a, a not I, I am a woman who lives in 2021 that's an it. indigenous woman so I it is my own stories now but mm. stories that have resonated since the beginning of time or since exactly uh, honey let's be real and then from colonization, obviously. Yes. The text of that. So there, there's whole stories. But I think mm. for me as well, like I don't ever hashtag any of my stuff. So I really, mm. there's things that I, little checkpoints that I've put in place to avoid mm. situations 
I want my platform to be a safe space for my people. Number one, so that's beautiful. the most important part. Yeah. I want I want black people to be able to come to my space and feel welcome and supported and heard mm. and amplified. Our voice is amplified. So I don't, I don't ever hashtag my stuff. I don't ever tag any accounts. I'm not that sort of person. I'm not trying to get four million followers. That's not the what gaze. I'm... Yeah, exactly. The Western gaze over, yeah. over, over here. What's happening? So I really, really try hard, but somehow I still get these people who come to my page, especially at this time of the year. Mm. I get the horrible comments. And you know what? I was actually thinking because I don't hashtag my stuff and I don't really put myself out there like that to open myself up for white people to just come and degrade me as a human being and my people and the people in my yeah life. um it actually says a lot about the people who follow me and what conversations mm. they're not having with their family and friends because if you are following me and you're an ally and mm. you repost and share one of my pieces then the people that you are showing that stuff to are then coming to my page, right? So true, sis. So it's really important, random thought, I was just thinking this, random thought that, you know, mm. if you're an ally or you're sharing my work and you have people who are in your family, in your mm. circle, on your social media, who are racist, just know that you're bringing them to my page. So make sure you have yeah. these conversations, you know, like that's why it's really 100% as allies if you really believe in what we're talking about in our messages and um, mm. the importance of what we do and create content creators, then you need to do the work. You need to, there is some work that needs to happen. You need to pull up your socks, go mm. home and talk to your parents. It's never too late. You're never too That's old. Right. That's right. Old dogs can learn new tricks mm -hmm. about how to interact with black people. Your mother's That's right control out of pocket is what we would say over period here. because out what you're pocket. saying sis is the real life lived experience is art mimics real life guys what's happening on social media is representative of our real life our society and that's what again is we're fictitiously told about the internet it's like this separate entity these conversations may be happening on social media, but are you having them with your family? Are you having them with the people that follow you or support you? Because mm. I feel like that is where a lot of the lack of communication is happening. Because mm. when I open up myself to have a, a voice, and mm. probably similar to you as well, AJ, as black content creators mm. or brands or influencers or whatever yeah. it is that you, word that you want to use, when we yeah. open ourselves up to that and then you share it, and that mm. work hasn't been done in the background. You are opening the door. Exposing us, really. Exposing us. And that's what I was just, yeah. it was interesting. It sort of just hit me now. Such a I'm powerful, like, so prof Look, it's hit me. Look at me, guys. You can just literally hear how shut I am. I'm like, wow. It's so, I've never thought of it that way. Never. Bringing those people to us. So it's really mm. important that um, you mob do the work. And, and it is, social media isn't all bad especially as a brand for me, it's meant that I've been able to make money. It's, it's meant That's that right. I live, that I've been able to support myself and my family. It's meant mm. that I've been able to um, voice myself, have my opinions and thoughts and my lived experience voiced. It's been, it's, it's done a lot of things for me. So it's not all bad. And I don't want anyone That's to right. social media is that, especially for black people, we've seen that um, we've been able to, strategize as black followers online we've been able to pull up that's so true pull up events um, well me and you found each other online we found without each other it online. guys there would be no unapologetically black Could you, you know and Ginny, without it i would say there'd be no aj so there'd be no none of my content because you wouldn't be able to access us sis. like that is how marginalized we are as black people black like you said artists content creators producers whatever you want to call it guys because that's exactly what we're doing mm. we are creating um content and i think if it's a jacket if it's a hoodie if it's a podcast episode or even if it's a post sis so if it's you posting about you know this this work or what you're doing or what you're experiencing that is content guys and that deserves that respect and, and given um recognition as well 
So I think that's really important is moving forward is understanding the capacity that Indigenous people are trying to create. And in creating that, make sure if you're an ally, you're helping us do that safely and having those discussions with your community. Because mm, mm-hmm. they ain't going to listen to us. You know, these racists on TikToks are not going to listen to us. They are going to keep coming. The racist in Ginny's comments are going to keep coming. But that could be your literal brother. That could be your cousin. That could be your, your neighbor or your uncle, the person your on your auntie. soccer team. Mm. your auntie literally Mm. these people are in your space and that is the difference between indigenous australia and non-indigenous australia we do not have access to these spaces but they have access to us and that is why it's problematic and i want to talk about a little thing that i tried i'm doing differently this year because every year around this time i do plan posts for my um for my platforms i don't i try and stay off the internet as much as possible during the lead up to australia Day yeah. because that's when all of the worst of the worst of the worst that come out that's it we took 100%. we saw uh, we saw the capital being <laughs> being uh, you know taken a hold of last week and let me just tell you something that is my mm-hmm. social media page every year <laughs> during australia day so i am true this what a great metaphor i'm literally assaulted Mm. I am verbally abused. I am taken mm. advantage of. I'm exploited. I am. Mm. It's horrible. It's horrible to no. be black in January. Let me tell you, January yeah. is horrible. Rough. So this year I try to do something different. Usually I stay offline. This year, I, and honest to God, I'm not joking. I probably spend in January a good two and a half weeks of the month crying because as much as I want to stay offline uh, then as black followers as well we share the audacity we mm. share the audacity of people and I'm guilty of doing this too mm. um sharing other people's comments sharing videos of people mm. being openly racist yeah uh, you know all kinds of stuff because we're so horrified that there are still people who will not let us merely exist that's it really exist so literally i spent a good good part of the month crying myself to sleep reading stupid mm. comments and going down that rabbit hole that aj was talking about that's it much like your youtube videos you start reading a thread and all mm. of a sudden you've read every single comment and you feel like shit you feel like yeah. your existence is what's 100%. making it very difficult for other people to just survive it's that's so really, true. really fucking horrible it's um, a bad place man Sorry for my language, but I just want you to know yeah. if, if you're non-Indigenous, it, it is... Uh, Understand. It, yeah, it's horrible. Um, so this year I tried something really different. I, I have a lot of allies um, and we have a lot of allies in uh, unapologetically Black as well. Mm. You mob who help make us feel welcome. <laughs> in our 100%. Own um, yeah. So this year I put... M- you know, since Black Lives Matter, we've seen a lot of, uh, it became a trend. We saw a lot of people jump mm. on the wagon, especially a lot of brands and businesses and organizations feeling like if they hadn't posted something to address what was happening in the country, so true. they would be vilified and crucified. And so they should. That's right. So that unfortunately has led to a lot of performative uh, allyship. A hundred percent. And if you're one of those people, we're not stupid. We know who that's right we can see for what it is we can see you're so transparent sis a hundred percent translucent even literally <laughs> and we want to encourage you guys this is another side note why i want to encourage you guys this january and moving forward any other dates nadoc whatever it may be right let's really analyze people's presence on social media their content and let's really understand what they're saying and why why are they being motivated to speak on specific issues because there's a lot of exploitation happening so there's a lot of exploitation of indigeneity um on in relation to non-indigenous folk but also indigenous folk because Mm. once we try to become something that you can popularize Mm. um there comes power because we can talk we can get down the economic route we can be like oh well they're doing it to make money this is problematic let's talk about power 
okay because well, i'm seeing a whole lot of power thirsty black fellas mm-hmm. that want to be the next thing want to be the next leader or the next whatever influencer um and that's really dangerous so that's happening on social media as well and if you are an ally like we're saying talking to your family about black fellas and our issues because you may be woke uh quotation marks but it's your family and I don't think you can be woke unless you've had those discussions because you best believe black fellas we're having those conversations with our mob and our community that are in a too hard basket because we have to do it to survive so if we have to do it you have to do it but then also my other point to our allies and even other indigenous folk is let's analyze what is happening right now with people and their platforms and pushing their portfolios because why are they doing it Mm. And at these I mean, specific dates if you're not doing it for the rest of the year if you're not posting a tile about anything any other day of the week you're only specifically talking about it when it's recognized by white society or the lens is on us so australia day and nadoc if there's another black deaths in custody god forbid if something terrible happens there's a new bill or legislation and you want to be all pro-black then mm. that is dangerous mm. and that's what i mean as well is like we t- <laughs> We saw what happened with Black Lives Matter. We can see mm, the formative allyship. And I think as black fellas as well, we saw black fellas do the same sort of thing, leveraging maybe a bit of their culture, maybe a bit of their brand and mm. identity. And we just want to address this because I think it's really important that if you are an ally, that you're doing research. And by research, I mean, you don't just talk to the one black friend you had in high school That's right. and ask them. That's 100% right how do I navigate this you mob it's really important that you reach out to multiple people Mm. it's really important that you do research on the internet number one do that first that's right before you start approaching people because the labor that gets done and anyway so I reached out to my followers on Ginny's girl gang and said Mm. this year I don't feel like dealing with all this bullshit long story short um this is how I usually spend the year Mm. laid up somewhere lying low not uh, like not reading comments and accessible avoid- yeah yeah not uh, avoiding all social media mm. um and so i asked my allies who have posted black lives matter uh, that they support mm. black followers that they believe in what we do and, and our opinions and that this particular time of the year is very traumatic for us um i asked them to do the hard work i said mm. you're going to see comments in my in, on my social media page, very racist comments. I'm going to show them on my um, story so you can see where they yeah. are. Yeah. Point them out to you because I don't want to do with I love this. that. And, and you're also, I said, any other Black accounts that you follow, you're going to see if any other Black accounts are posting about how they feel and their opinions during this time of the year, you will see that people are going to s- seek them out to have their opinions and say That's right things that let me just remind you mob as well if you're a non-indigenous person or even if you are an indigenous person Mm. we have a far higher suicide rate than any other people in australia Mm. this is not a debate no this is not this this is not an opinion it's factual yes please understand that and this is not a conversation this is life or death for our people yeah that's it this isn't this isn't like oh change the date or abolish the date and everything Mm. no you mob this is life or death for our people this is life or death that's it sit with that understand that if you don't believe me do your research then come back at me i'm sick of you mob anyway Mm. i have asked my followers to do all the hard work and so far so good I've had a lot of <laughs> such an amazing initiative. I think I need to start doing that. Yes. I, Here I, is the well, ball in your court and, and run with it because we're exhausted. And even that Ginny, like I wanted to talk a bit more guys about, I guess the impacts I've had on TikTok because I am so strong. I am so staunch. And I feel like many people that I have been required to be resilient. I don't talk about my emotional response, but my mm. biggest response with my racial degradation over on TikTok is fear. So I worry, I worry, I worry, I worry because I, have 30,000 uh, 30, followers I have a million likes guys 
over on my TikTok, I worry. I worry. People will recognize me. I went to a cafe um, where I study and then the girl would always kind of like stare a little bit too long. And I just thought maybe she's never seen a big black girl before. Right. But she said, oh, I, I've seen you on TikTok. It's amazing what you do. That's great. But guys, it scares me because it makes me think what if a redneck or a racist sees me. Well, um, you see the, the comments, street. how horrible they are. Then I, I would only imagine that you would be worried. Literally. And the other scary thing, guys, is my daughter. So what happens if I'm in Parramatta, if I'm in uh, Redfern, if I'm at Maroubra Beach, wherever I may be with my child, right? I do not have a partner or a man. What happens? And that is the lived experience of black people because don't for a second think that that doesn't happen. I'm a six foot black presenting woman in in Sydney and especially Western Sydney. It's dangerous. So please understand the importance behind what we do. A lot of people like to mock us like, oh, well, you're just online activists. You're not really doing anything. First of all, you don't know what I do in my personal life or behind <laughs> no. the scenes, no. but don't devalue my efforts of uh discuss discussing presenting and creating online because that is another white mechanism of control is to devalue our opportunities to branch out and reach mainstream australia of course we're going to be um made fun of and devalued so mm. understand guys it is very scary every day i'm already hyper vigilant but because i create content and content that is unapologetically black mm -hmm. or content that is pro-black adamantly yeah. pro-black i'm putting my physical body at risk right so you might it, it, this is just context if you're mm. not and we, really i feel like this episode in a lot of ways is one we're really trying to speak to you yeah. as an ally and how you can help and and i think that's the biggest thing is like listen we, we've made it really clear that's and right. that's why i do get frustrated when a lot of people will message me and be like but what can i do we've spelled so it true. out and even now i think i found though with directing people to say you're going to see comments that are going to make me feel like i don't want to live anymore that's, that's how bad these comments that's are it. that's um, it just so and that's the intended impacts guys let's not jump around this let's not act like indigenous people are being told not to live anymore just because they're indigenous this is what happens to every single indigenous person in this country if you are living within indigenous australia mm. you are told not to live anymore so mm. let's not act like it's online bullying or they're attacking me or they're trolling me this is not trolling this has literal ramifications on our people who have been exposed to this since the arrival of the british this isn't teasing me because I'm fat. This isn't making fun of me because I'm, I've got a big forehead, right? <laughs> this goes beyond it. And that is, yes, that is damaging. I'm not going to devalue the impacts that that has, but this is something that is inherently different and something that needs an inherently different response. Because mm -hmm. exactly. this ain't anti-bullying. This is anti-blackness and they're two different things. And Ooh. I demand for that to be recognized. I'm sorry. Oh, she hit that on the head. You, Bob. you heard that. This is not anti-bullying. This is anti-blackness. That's it, sis. Well, guys, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, and I want to thank Ginny. I just want to sit here, sis. And guys, you aren't here when you're watching this. You aren't seeing this. It's her and I. We're in our homes. We're alone discussing this. And I just want to thank you, Ginny, for allowing yourself to speak your truth. I'm probably going to get emotional because I'm a bloody mess. But this is something that I never would have thought. I would never have thought in my life that I would be sitting with someone I admire and respect so much with your work and your um what is it called creativity and even your work worth ethic and your belief in our people and what we do so thank you so much jenny it oh, is just sis. such an honor for you to share with us on this likewise. sensitive and personal topic likewise i think we're really without social media you and i wouldn't be sitting here and having this conversation not at all and and we are using this just you and I are using this as a vehicle mm. to access so many important people or so just, not even just important people people mm. about our lived experience as black women navigating right. how to live how how to just live um and not just for ourselves but for our people as well so that we can avoid mm. situations like this so we've already told you mob if you're an ally now you know 
there are so many things that you can do. One of those is supporting us by having conversations, having the hard conversations for us because mm. we're tired. So exhausted. <laughs> we and were just talking about how exhausted you were just now. And guys, amplify our, amplify our voices. Mm. You don't share, have to speak share, for us. Share our content. You don't need to be the expert on black uh, experience. You don't need to be the speaking point. You don't need, if you are non Indigenous, obviously, you don't need to be the uh, journalist, the anthropologist, the capturing of stories. Mm. You don't need to know all the facts. We know the facts. Mm. We're able to communicate them. Now is the time for moving us out of the shadows into the mainstream. And the only way that is going to happen is with the people. Mm. So reshare our content, guys. Like I was saying, appreciate it. Because just mm. like I say deuces on TikTok and have my time away, um, I'm, I will apply that to uh, Instagram if, it come, if push comes to shove because we have to prioritise ourselves uh, in navigating contemporary colonisation. So appreciate what you got. That's all I'm gonna say. And when just for pre- just to make sure that you mother understand, when we say we, we don't mean just AJ and I. We're talking yeah. about black community. Um, Definitely, your, you know, our cousins, our sisters, our so uncles, true, our nannas, our everyone. Make sure you mm. are supporting all black people, not just That's those it. palatable and digestible. Yes, girl, a hundred percent. And no matter how big me and Judy sitting over here on one thousand something followers, it ain't much. <laughs> Many people would look at that and just be thinking, "Oh my god, that's." Pathetic. We love all thousand. Actually, we got told you, Mum. Speaking of trolls, yes, get into speaking it. Speaking of trolls, we had a young man last week. Um, we shared. Uh, I shared a picture of our new merch, which we're really excited about. A T-shirt that we're coming out with, which is. I think is bomb.com. Yes, it has our faces on it. Number one. What else are we going to put, Jules? <laughs> we are unapologetically black. Mm. And we're happy to be the forefront at this and take all of the criticism. Mm. And criticism we got. <laughs> so 15-year-old, I don't know what his name. Let's call him Trevor. Trevor <laughs> from Orange, New South Wales. And, Ooh. you know, I know who you are because you have all your information in your bio. You're so cute. Stupid. 15 years old from Orange. Anyway. Down. Trevor decided to come on to our little comments and say, oh my God, you guys are so fucking stupid. You only have like a thousand followers. How vain. No, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe Old it. Old mate had 24. But that's okay. Because you know what? Ooh. Numbers on everything. No. Numbers on that, everything. We speak because we want to speak. We create the content we want to create. We're selling shirts because we need to sell this. We need to sell black faces. We need to have visibility. Black women need to be seen. Women that look like Ginny are not being seen. Women that look like me are not being seen. Mm. We need to be in control of that. And if you are purchasing our shirts, you are being in um, solidarity between that and of that. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, guys, it's the recognition of Australia looking at two black women and redefining what it means even to be Indigenous in this country. So there's value and there's meaning behind our merch, but we're going to get into that in another episode. All right. But in the meantime, if you are an ally, you can purchase our T-shirts and also purchase other Black brands. There's so many of us out there. Um, When you support us by by buying our work, our artwork, our Mm -hmm. people, content our workshops whatever that looks like you are supporting yep. our community um 100%. we are we are trying well we are working towards self-determination um and by doing that you are helping us get that that way so if you're like i don't know what to do i don't know how to help black people buy something that's it well, and someone made a comment is this merch okay or appropriate for allies you best believe this is for allies we you will let you know when it's not. <laughs> Trust okay. us. Just remove that doubt. Yes. <laughs> Until we tell you no. <laughs> if we say do not buy this, if you are not this, <laughs> then don't. But in the meantime, Literally. go for your life. And you know what? You could always buy it for another black follower. Oh, I that's like that. That's another thing. Like There's no one. excuse. Buy you and someone else one. And your white ones too. Buy one for your bloody old <laughs> auntie. And yeah. Wear this. Any Slap black brand, go out, re- yeah. research. There's so many of us. One hundred percent. We're trying to to rebalance the economy. Anyway, Ooh. so that's like- our online uh, media episode. 
do you have any final remarks sis, um, on social media or online presence or any final message you'd want to leave our viewership today with? Yeah, I think for me, it would be just, well, I think we spoke a lot to our non-Indigenous allies. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've given you really clear uh, directions on how to be an ally, especially in the social yeah. media space. You can support us by, by having conversations with your friends and family. You can support us by responding to racist comments so mm -hmm. that we don't have to put in the energy and the labor that goes into that, that we spend our whole lives doing. Um, mm -hmm. You can support us by buying and purchasing artwork and supporting brands. And if you can't do that in a monetary way, because we know that that's mm -hmm. not for everyone, then share, retweet, that's it, post all of our stuff. Um, and yep. when I say we, I mean all black brands. The That's only it. other thing I want to say is if you're a black follower and you're listening to this episode, we haven't spoken much to you, Mob, but <laughs> you know so how important social media is. You know that what we're saying is is mm. the truth and is probably a lot of your lived experiences too. We yeah. see you, we support you. We want you to continue sharing. By sharing, you are existing. By sharing, you are creating. By sharing, you are pro-black just by being here by listening mm. supporting you are doing decolonizing in every way shape and form um i want to encourage black followers if you're listening and you mm. feel um anxious or if you feel like this time of the year is a horrible time for you as well mm. feel good about removing yourself from the situation yep. you don't 100%. need to have you don't need to have you don't have to be here all this time. No, you need you don't to have work. to have participation. No. Right. You don't have to feel like this. I encourage mm. you to detox. I encourage you to go through who you follow, delete people that don't make you feel mm. good. This in body positivity in a in a body positivity way. Now I want you to go back through those through your followers and if you've got black followers on there that don't represent you, get rid of them. If you've got white followers on there that make you feel like shit, get rid of them. That's it. 100% um, point blank period guys mm -hmm. and be you sis that's all I have to say yay I don't know guys, I love that thank you so much Jenny again and thank you everybody for listening those were our final sentiments. Thank you again for watching and supporting and listening to another very complex conversation and watch us and support us as we navigate this space. So that is our episode done and thank you for listening. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Unapologetically Black. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram at Unapologetically Black. You'll find our merch, contact details, and content in the link tree of our Instagram bio. In the meantime, please share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. As black creators, we're incredibly grateful for your support. Big love, take care, and yarn next week.